Uh, the phases were so small they didn't mix very well, so we used an ultrasonic humidifier that we tore apart to mix the phases. A small toy centrifuge to uh, re-separate them, then we would pipette off the top phase, dry it on a hot plate, and, and put it on the detector. But I like this picture because it's got the boss, it's got the young staff scientist, it's got the graduate student all smiling for the camera, it's got the postdoc doing all the work. <laughs> that's, that's Andy. That's Andy Andreas Turler. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And then we moved over to uh, some automated or, yeah, automated systems. Uh, okay, so in the pink, and I think that was supposed to be magenta, but it, it, wait, I got another page somewhere. I want this one. Yes, the pink curve, uh, we heard about already from Matthias. Uh, a gas jet transport to an automated um, aqueous chemistry, and there I'm talking pretty much about the ARCA. Uh, the first three points are about the same. The chemistry is somewhat faster. We're getting samples onto the detectors after about 30 seconds. It can be repeated about every 45 seconds. Uh, right, and, and we can do thousands now of irradiations, irradiation, separation, and counting cycles to build up statistics. Uh, the present systems, ARCA, is very labor intensive, but it gives sensitivity down to the sub nanobar region. This is the 265 Seborgium experiment that was done a few years ago. Um, I don't remember what else I was going to say about that. Uh, okay, and finally, oh, I have a picture. I don't, did you show a picture? No, no. no. Uh, this, is, this is the one I, I grabbed off the web because I was in a hurry. Uh, but it's just, it's just for column chromatography. He's got very small columns in here. Uh, the gas that comes in through the top, and these these are four valves just used for switching various solutions uh, through uh, through the columns. And then they did a lot of work uh, on drying the samples fast. They're coming through in, in probably 100 microliters, and by applying heat from a quartz lamp, hot helium, uh, blowing in a circle around it, and heat from below, they're able to dry them in about 10 seconds. Okay, and last, I have the yellow curve. It was supposed to be, a, I guess it is yellow. I thought it was supposed to be orange. Oh, it shows orange there, okay. Uh, where does this uh, uh, gas jet, and now we're talking about the gas phase chemistry. Uh, and I have a picture here of the device that we used recently for element 107 chemistry. Uh, here we have the gas jet coming in, a hot section where we feed in reactive gases, then an isothermal section where we're doing something very much like standard gas chromatography, just at temperatures like 180 degrees. They come out, they reattach to, to uh, aerosol particles for a gas jet, and then it goes away to the detection system. And, okay, a few words about that. Again, the top few are the same. It's faster. Uh, we get the chemistry time down to about five seconds. It's sensitive to the detection of about atoms per week. Much less labor intensive than, than any of the other techniques that we've done, although we, we still do have to work to do it. And really it gives sensitivities down to the 10 picobar scale for a certain range of half lines. So that's kind of the way the developments for the chemical separations have gone. And now I have two slides to summarize and then we can all go. Uh, okay, during the last 20 years, online separator techniques have, have improved in sensitivity by about a factor of 100. And it's really resulted in the discovery of 10 new elements during that time, many new isotopes. Uh, long, long ago, I guess during the late 1960s, there were predictions that shell, nuclear shell effects would give super heavy elements around proton number 114 and neutron number 184. More recently, in the early 90s, uh, the calculations were improved and showed that for deformed shapes, there should also be some shell effects near proton number 108 and proton number 162. Both of those predictions have been experimentally confirmed. Uh, we do have two regions of nuclear stability, so that's, that's very exciting. Uh, and then looking towards the future, beam intensity increases along with a new understanding of the rare nuclear reaction mechanisms will assure that there's much exciting research uh, coming up in the, in the future. 
Okay, and in red I have the developments for chemistry, just summarizing. 20 years ago, there were experiment for, for transactinide chemistry, there were uh, reports of experimentally measured chemical properties through Z equals 104. Uh, a few reports in element 105 also, uh, gas phase chemistry from Dubna. We've now studied 104 and 104. These were, were really very basic preliminary studies. We've now studied these two elements in, in, in pretty good detail in both the aqueous and gas phases. Uh, we're to the point now where we can perform the chemical studies with isotopes, as half-lives as short as a few seconds, and this is about a factor of a thousand shorter than than the manual chemistry we were doing 20 years ago. Uh, the selectivity and sensitivity of the experiments has increased uh, in many ways. We're able to do uh, experiments with cross sections as small as 10 picobarns. This is production rates of just a, 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 a about an atom per day, detection rates of about an atom per week. Um, and also, recent results on the production and stability of the heaviest element isotopes indicate that sometime in the future, probably during the next 10 years, uh, we should be able to study chemical properties at least through element 114. So chemistry-wise, things are looking very interesting for the next several years as well. So thank you very much. Yes. Uh, you, you were mentioning, you sort of summarized the, the whole field. You were, mentioning, you were using the word we. And there are a lot of people in here who really know not who are the pl players. Could you sort of uh, detail a little bit who were the intellectual uh, uh, owners of these systems or who conceived these systems? Oh, uh, Arka and did Olga the, uh, and, and the Grand We, huh? Yeah, which is fine to, to me, but the, uh, the others uh, are, are not as familiar with it, probably. Well, uh, for the online separators, okay, we have the. Uh, at GSI, the heavy element work there, they really showed us how to do it, to do this uh, uh, technique of uh, implanting in the detector and looking at the subsequent decay. Uh, so that was uh, there with the d discovery of elements from 107 through 112. Uh, I think <coughs> with the separator at Dubna, uh, they have element 114 and 116 results and they actually showed us a brute force way to get through it and, and really go through with with the patients, uh, huge amounts of beam time uh, and, and do the experiments and that you can get results uh, like that. We've done the Berkeley gas build separator at Berkeley with the element 118 results. For the chemistry, uh, a lot of the manual chemistry... Don't you think you should mention SASE? Yeah. SASE was really the first... It depends who you ask. Yeah, SASE well, was, yeah, <laughs> the gas build <laughs> separator put together. If you ask Peter Armbruster, well, he no. made it uh, in the 1960s. No, I think but, he uh, SASE was probably the first one that was used for, for heavy element studies. Uh, although it was taken apart probably before yeah, well, it should have been, but many that's another times, thing. Many times. <laughs> uh, and for the chemistry, uh, a lot of the manual chemistry was done at Berkeley. Uh, the, the GSI and Mines Radio Chemistry Group was uh, really pushing and showing us how to do the automated uh, liquid phase chemical separations. The gas phase uh, chemistry uh, was developed mostly by Heinz Gagler and the, and the Swiss group. Uh, we were kind of ahead of them in the gas phase chemistry with a second generation thing for a couple years, but they have uh, improved on us again and they're, they're, they're doing it now the best way. And uh, you know, it turns out there's actually more chemistry coming on um, around the world. Uh, in France, they're doing some of these three column techniques to look at, to do chemistry and look at the daughters. Uh, chemistry program is coming online at, uh, in Japan at Jerry, and I also think at, at Riken they have a, uh, they're starting a, with a chemistry laboratory there. Um, and also at Dubna, uh, gas phase chemistry is, is doing quite well there. Um, and? Uh, so it really, uh, it's really, uh, it's spreading around the world now. Uh, it was really a, a small number of laboratories in the game. Uh, 20 years ago, there was almost nobody. 10 years ago, a small number. Now it's really spreading around. It's c catching on more interest. You know, you might mention one thing, and that was, I didn't have a chance to talk about it, but in 84, uh, 83, 84, there was this uh, 
a big prediction of relativistic effects. And that actually initiated a renaissance in looking at, at chemical properties. And um, um, when we started at Berkeley in 84, you actually did the first aqueous chemistry manually on 105. And mm -hmm. then things went on and on and on. Silica's lights. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. 